Hello there, welcome. Today I have another Katsu video for you and today we're looking at how to block correctly. That means when to block, when to keep your hand and when to actually send it all. Now against KO that is especially interesting because at times they can't convert their whole hand and they need to rely on rolling scap skins if they don't have the necessary agility or go against horses in their hand. And that, of course, is very risky for them. First things first, as, as always, the, the enemy KO has a cast bones on turn zero, so that's not good. And they don't attack, so we don't get to fill our graveyard for free. But that's quite usual for cards, so that your early game will be a little bit slower. We'll just go for some standard attacking here. And it seems like KO can convert his hand pretty well. So he takes the damage and we get to look for a Bonds of Ancestry here. Of course, we don't have the, the best cards in our graveyard to target yet. So we just get the, the Whelming Gust Wave for free coming in after this. But that's still 10 damage we can leak on our first turn. Now... Kao also has a very huge fridge, meaning he has lots of armor that we get to need to get through before we can actually deal damage to him, uh, threaten on it, and so on. And especially that scouting flashback the headpiece he's using can screw up Katsu quite a bit. That basically means he get, gets a, a, a free turn out of us when because whenever we keep a large hand to actually combo him, he'll just put that in front and more often than not he'll it's something in our hand that we definitely needed. So we can't threaten a lot of damage on a 5 or 4 card hand and just need to pass and then we need to have enough HP to get to another hand that is as strong as the last one was. Now Salter Wound is also not a card we want to see in our hand early on. It's more for pitching and Catching out with Mask of the Pouncing Links. Um, and the same goes for Tenacity, so really not the best start for us here. But since we know Chaos is going to be attacking, we're just gonna block this out as as, as far as possible. I will also I will decide to actually put in every card here and not keep any back because it's possible that KO will intimidate with a pack hunt next, and then we're just stuck on a single card that we can't use, and we also have an arsenal. So we can't put a single card in there either. Now we do risk him having CNC here, which would just clear our arsenal, but that's not even a big deal because Salter Wound really isn't that strong. For us in this situation, we'd rather have a clear arsenal so we can put Art of War, Searching Strike, Gust Wave or Bonds of Ancestry in here. And exactly that's what happens. But okay, life point parity. Of course, Ko has the tempo, meaning it's his turn, and we need to defend, and he has all that armor. But we're Katsu, we have a filled graveyard now. We can do very huge turns. Unfortunately for us, Kayo gets the gets the Blood Rush Bellow, which is similar to an agility for him. That means he will be able to convert his whole hand here. And we can make the decision to actually still take the damage and send at least 100 wins and Fluster Fist. Because that's a 2 card 7, that's a buff rate, that's good. And also we would only be blocking for 5 of the, both of those. I make the decision to block with them though. Because as I've been saying, Katsu can put out way more damage than just a 2 card 7. So I'd rather buy me more life and more time to wait for that really good hand. That will just completely... Overwhelm KO. Another super interesting thing to notice here again, KO doesn't have the agility token for next turn. So if we block with our whole hand, or let's say two more cards and Arsenal one, it's very likely that we'll keep him stranded on at least one card. Of course, against KO, it's always risky because he could have that agile wind up now. Maybe he does get lucky and roll that five on the scap skin leathers. Now, we actually draw into a very good hand here. And the KO doesn't get a second action point. 
So while we, while we will take some damage now, we are sure to send back quite a bit as well. If I remember correctly, there's actually both Tenacities and the Salter Wound in our graveyard now. So the only thing we want to pick up with our mask left is Blue Bonds of Ancestry. Or let's say we have the third or second Ancestry already, we can pick up a Gust Wave to enable another Bonds Chain Link. And especially with Art of War, that's, it can at least be as effective as a Tenacity in most games. Nice, so... Card at Kaio has to set up his next turn. There's nothing else he can play. Uh, we are now putting in the battle one armor we have because it's very likely we need to use at least one of those pieces in, in the upcoming turn. Now, if we get the Scowling Flashback here, that's really good because with Art of War, we can react to the, the trigger like this. And there's no chance of him intimidating that, that key card now and yeah him getting a bunch of ancestry is kind of unlucky for us here but we still have that mask up we still have the katsu trigger so we can get at least two bonds of ancestries anyway and if i remember correctly we have one floating no actually we don't have anything floating so we will need to crack our breeze rider boots here that's why i'm undoing i Need to check the marks. Because what's happening now is we will get a Whelming Gust Wave, which doesn't have go again normally, so we need Breeze Rider Boots to give it that go again. And then we'll fetch a, a Bonds of Ancestry with the Bonds of Ancestry we already have, and then we can play two Bonds in this combat chain. So yeah, we crack that. The most efficient thing here is to get the Whelming Gust Wave for the yellow one. Mask of the Pouncing Links can only fetch cards that have an attack value of 2 or less. So exactly, we get this one. And then we get a red bonds from our Katsu Trigger. And now we can start by playing that first bonds. With this we will get another bonds of Ancestry. And now... Because we have Breeze Rider Boots cracked, we can play the Whelming Gust Wave right after this one and then enable that second Bonds of Ancestry. And that's all happening while we have the plus one buff from Out of War. So that's exactly what you want to see. And I can tell you if the Scowling Flashback didn't intimidate our yellow Bonds of Ancestry, but for example Spinning Wheel Kick, we would have been able to do three Bonds of Ancestry in this turn. And that's at least six value from the Out of War alone. Six damage, that, that is. Now we're just getting a chain ender here. This honor is coming in for four after the bonds of ancestry was the last chain link. And out of all buffs it one further. And then I'm debating whether I want to just Throw one Kodachi pitching that spinning wheel kick or actually sacrifice my heart and cross trap to get the the resources to throw spinning wheel kick for five. And I'd say getting four value of heart and cross trap at this point is probably enough. Uh, because what I'm thinking is well it, it just means I need to keep a another blue, and a blue would be a three block. So four is bigger than four or three and therefore I decided to to just invest that here that math is a little like you need to consider more but in this case it it sort of works out okay once again wants to hold his hand we get a katsu trigger Um, I'm not sure if getting the Whelming Gust Wave is the best choice here. Descendant just for the damage might just be better because this is quite easy for him to block out, but Ko decides not to block at all. So that draw actually is quite nice. 
And now we get to play another double bonds very naturally. We'll just fetch a Descendant Gust Wave with one of the bonds that we can play with Go again. And we have one resource floating for it too. And then we'll play the second bonds and then we'll get a Flusterfist to follow that up. And yeah, KO invested a lot of his armor in, into our big turn, so that's ideal for us. I mean, ideally for him, he should be still blocking now, so we don't get this, this free double bonds turn. But even then, he was only able to basically use his armor once one more time. And now, yeah, he's low. We will, we will be threatening the Kodachi lock now. And also, we want to get our breaking scales in. Um, basically, okay, at this point, he doesn't even recognize, and he's just dead. That happened to me as well. That's a a common thing to make this mistake. But yeah, that that's been the KO match. Of course, that can that matchup can go either ways. Either way, if we don't find the that that go to hand there, or if KO locks differently, um, we we're quite behind in life, and then. All of that can get out of hand, but that's just how it is in an aggro matchup. Uh, if you want to see a matchup that isn't aggro, that is just straight up value and outplaying, then I'd recommend you check out my other videos and I'll see you there.